Hey guys, it's Sarah and today is Bookless Thursday. This is a video series I do with my friend Lindsay over at Lindsay's Little Library. And every Thursday we bring you some sort of list or book topic that we feel like talking about for the week. And this week we are going to talk about some books that we wish had adaptations. This was a very easy list for me to make. I was like, yep, 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 yep. Uh, some of these I think might have rumors of adaptations, but nothing's in the works yet. Or maybe they just bought the rights or something like that. So some of them are going to be adapted. Um, so like my wish is kind of coming true, but nothing's nothing's official until it's made, right? Like we've seen so many adaptations kind of start and then never happen <laughs> or like production starts, but it never goes through like for whatever reason. So there's been a lot of things that I was excited about the adaptations, but no clue on whether or not they're even happening anymore. So never say never. Okay. So the first one is Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I, when I was reading this, the way that this was written is, you know, you're following this carnival, it's a traveling carnival, and you ha it's very exclusive, you have to be invited to go and attend, you can't just like walk in. Um, it takes years to get an invitation type thing, you kind of have to be a chosen person. And so our main character and her sister finally get tickets to this traveling carnival. And so they go and there's an option on you can either be a participant, where you are part of the show, and you are part of this um, game that you are trying to solve a case or to solve a, I don't want to say like a riddle, but like you're trying to find something in this whole thing. And it's a whole, a whole big game, or you can just be a spectator. You can just sit back, relax, eat your popcorn and watch other people try to do it. So, um, it's all fun and games for these two until one of the sisters goes missing, like legit goes missing. And so now it's a cat and mouse game of trying to find her sister and what happened to her and what's really going on. And the cool thing about this is that it's a magical carnival. So you don't know what's real and what's not. You could be looking at a person and talking to them, but they could not be a real person, you know, and you just kind of see the magic dissolve right in front of you and what you thought you knew, like, it was just really cool. Um, and as I was reading this, the way it's written and the descriptions that she used, I could so vividly picture this in my mind. And all I kept thinking was, I need Tim Burton <laughs> to adapt this. This read so vividly to me in my head, like a Tim Burton movie, like Alice in Wonderland, Tim Burton type, just... There was one specific scene in here that I still remember where her dress changed and I just pictured like almost like a Cinderella, <laughs> you know, she was turning and her dress was, you know, changing and it was just, it was beautifully written. So, but yeah, Tim Burton, I need this one. Okay. The next one I have here is This Tender Land by William Kent Kruger. I think that this story is really good that would adapt to screen really well. And I think that it's a good opportunity to show off the beautiful landscape imagery that is in this book. This very much has a lot to do with the land that these characters are traveling on. So we're following a boy and his brother and they've lost their parents. So they are sent to this um, hmm, school for boys. However, it's awful and they pretty much treat them like slaves and abuse them and it's awful. Um, and they are the only two white boys and everyone else is indigenous at this school. Uh, so you are following these boys and they're literally trying to survive because their lives are actually in danger at this place. And they end up, one of them makes a really bad decision and gets them in a lot of trouble. So they end up fleeing from the school along with a couple of the other students. And so you're seeing them surviving in the wilderness basically in Minnesota and uh, kind of follow their exploits and how they survive and who they meet along the way and how dangerous it is and all that stuff. So I think this would be a great opportunity to tell the story and to really be very cinematically beautiful. Okay, uh, this one, I feel like this has already been announced that there's going to be an adaptation of it, but Addie LaRue, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, I really feel like this is going to be a beautiful, beautiful movie because the book is beautiful. We start out in France and uh, she is being forcibly married to someone she doesn't want to be married to. So she reaches out to any God, anyone that will listen and just wants her prayers answered where she doesn't have to 
be married to this man. So somebody answers her and uh, grants her wish. However, the price of that wish is that Addie LaRue is going to be immortal and nobody will remember her. The second that she is out of their line of sight or, you know, leaves the room and comes back in, they are not going to remember who she is. So they only remember her or know who she is when they are in the same room talking to her. Um, the second someone even turns their back, they could forget who she is. So that is her curse. And she has to live that way for the rest of her life, literally forever, because she's immortal now. Um, so you follow her across decades, centuries, <laughs> living this way. And then um, all of a sudden, somebody does remember her. She runs into someone who remembers her. And so now it's, why? Why do you remember me? How is this a thing? Um, but I can't tell you that I'm cursed and all these things. So it was just, I loved every single page of this book. Loved it, loved it. And um, I hope it does get adapted. I think it does. I think it's like the rights have been purchased type thing. So very, very early in the stage, but I would definitely be very interested in seeing this adapted. Okay, next one is another one that did already say there were going to be movies of this book series and even the author was going to be the director which is really cool um, I remember him announcing that but I don't know where they are in that process I'm not sure it's been a while since I've even seen that so um, I'm not sure what's happening I know that COVID like put everything on pause for a while so I don't know what's gonna be back up and running after all that type of stuff so I hope this one does keep going um, but that's The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer this is a middle grade series that follows a set of twins who learn that they are able to transport themselves into this book called The Land of Stories that they used to read with their parents as kids. And in this book is all the fairy tales. So like Snow White, Cinderella, um, Little Red Riding Hood, Rapunzel, <laughs> um, Jack and the Beanstalk, like all these fairy tales that are in there. And they're able to actually travel to this world and be among these people who are in their fairy tales and they they get to know them they start making friends they realize the dangers that are actually in this land and that not everything is as it seems and these are not necessarily going the way that they're told and all that kind of stuff it's a lot of fun a lot of fun I've read the first three books I'm definitely excited to keep going and finish the last three because there's six total um but yeah so again I know that it was something that was planned I just don't know where they are in those plans anymore so we'll see and then the last one I have here is Sweep by Jonathan Oxier. I would love to see this adapted. Now, this follows a young girl who is a chimney sweep in Victorian London. You guys, we are talking like I want original Mary Poppins <laughs> vibes from something like this to be adapted. Oh my gosh, I think that would be just visually so pretty and stunning. And this book, I loved it. It's probably going to be on my favorites of the year. I loved it, loved it. Um, it was fantastic because you follow this girl and her, <laughs> she's kind of trying to survive because being a chimney sweep was so dangerous, which I thought was really interesting um, how dangerous that job actually was. And um, she takes comfort in a um, monster. That's all I'm going to say, but it was fantastic. Okay, guys, that is it for me today. Please make sure you go check out Lindsay's video and see which books that she is hoping to get adaptations from. I would I'm excited to see what she's going to say as well. And let me know down below what you guys think. What are some books that you have read that you want to see adaptations for? Um, I would love to know that. And we will see you guys again soon. Hope you have a good day. Bye.